Hey, everybody. I just want to wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. This is the time. It's a cliche, but we think back about all the things we have to be thankful for. And you know what? Scientists show that the more we have that we're thankful for, the happier we are. So, hey, I'm thankful for all of you. And let's get right down to it, shall we? And of course, I'm extremely thankful about this. It makes my life complete. Now, really, a lot of really kind of bad things happened to the market this week. So let's take a look at them. There's a couple of bullish things, but there's some bearish things. Last week, we talked about a potential head and shoulders bottom. That technically has not failed, but effectively it has. Also, purple predictor down near lows. We had a gap down today. So all in all, this looks pretty garbagey. Uh, the selling pressure skyrocketed. That's the red line in the upper purple box. And uh, you can see it quite clearly there. Uh, the green line is buying pressure. It disappeared here in the Dow. Now, the black line is the ADX, which is kind of the sum of the two of them, and then smoothed. And it's starting to move up, which suggests that we are now in a bear market. Uh, in other words, it's a trend indicator. It tells you when the trend is strong or not. The NASDAQ is the place where all the savaging has really taken place. This is really the place where uh, uh, the market has gone down hard. And you can see that's the case right now. Uh, seasonality remains neutral. We have to get above really 159 before I'm going to turn it back to bullish. And this is all in spite of what should be bullish seasonality using either uh, Stock Traders Almanac or Ned Davis. Both of them say this is a great period of time. So how do you interpret this? Well, when a market goes down, when the when it should be going up, then that's pretty darn bad. If this bullishness of seasonality is there and the market's still going down, what happens to the market when the bullish seasonality isn't there? It goes down even more. Now, this bullish seasonality carries through to uh, springtime of next year, but still, this is bad, bad, bad. This is really, I think, one of the biggest stories of the week. The yield curve in the lower right-hand corner moved to a new low. Now, I've told you that if we get to 25, that's it. It's a major bear market, 50% down, that kind of thing. Man, we didn't get there this week, but we came hard. And I think that spooked the market. Asset allocation, they're selling stocks, they're buying bonds. And that's what you should be doing too, by the way. No, we should be buying bonds. Uh, and, and of course, we should be hunkering down, we should be hedging, we should be uh, keeping our stops tight, we should be doing all kinds of defensive things for our stock market positions, if we have any. The stock market risk to Oh, this is TLT. This is the wrong chart. Let's carry on. Global shares, who cares? Now, this is the chart I wanted to show you, though. Bonds moving up have broken out to a new high. We've got to get long bonds. Bond key factors all pointing towards lower interest rates. Uh, the green line is interest rates. The chart itself is the CRB index. It's pointing down. The blue line is pointing down. That's 10-year treasuries in Germany. Only gold is kind of hanging out up there, but two out of three of our key factors are all pointing for lower interest rates in the U.S. And of course, eventually, that will support the stock market. That's one reason why I'm a little bit not sure we're seeing this big bear market. Okay, dollar, I'm really not that interested. Uh, gold, not that interested. We're trading at the same price we were in July, so skip it. Um, our indicators, though, you know, last week were pretty bullish. This week, not so bullish. The top indicator had started to break to new highs. That's the euro, but now it's traded off. The CRB was already kind of in a bear market, and it's going down even more. Only the bottom one is still kind of conclusively in a bull market. So it's kind of a mixed bag, and guess what? That's why gold is going nowhere. The indicators are going nowhere net net. Oil plunged. I thought we'd see a little bit more support in at this level. Uh, but nonetheless, it looks like the Saudis are increasing production as well as the Americans. So the two big swing producers in the world are both increasing production. Look for oil to get down into the lower 40s again. Bitcoin, kiss a goodbye. Uh, forget it. 
let's go right here. You have to have read this. Please, 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 please. This is where we get our great trade ideas. And that's it for me, freebies. Let's uh, hang on for all you fully paid up members, and we'll get right back to you.